Hey, what is up everyone? So, you have some Pokemon cards, you have some Pokemon collectibles, you have some Pokemon plushies, maybe other Pokemon stuff, and you wanna sell it. You know, maybe you don't want it anymore, maybe it's your collection, maybe it's something you invested in, or maybe it's just something you came across, you know nothing about it, you just wanna get rid of it, you wanna sell it, and you wanna make money, right? So, what is the best place to sell it? Well, you know what, I'm just here to provide some information, hopefully guide you, and hopefully you can find a good place to sell your stuff and get the most value for your stuff. So, the first place that comes to mind for a lot of people, online is eBay and Mercari. Now, eBay and Mercari are just uh, places online where you can list your stuff and sell it to people online, ship it to them, you make money, they get their stuff, everybody walks away happy. Now, the positive aspects of using eBay and Mercari is that you have like a large audience. So when you list something, you have a big audience of people, a big audience of potential buyers that can see your stuff online and possibly buy it. And if you find someone interested in it, you know, they'll watch it, watch it, and you can send them an offer. On both eBay and Mercari, you can send them an offer and say like, hey, I have it listed for 50 bucks, but I'll sell it to you for 40 and they'll accept it or whatever. Maybe they'll counter offer. And yeah, it's just a good place to list stuff, sell it, big pool of potential customers. And you know, you do gotta put in a little bit of legwork. You gotta take pictures, list it, ship it, go to the post office and drop it off. So I mean, just a little bit of legwork, but it's an easy method, a popular method. Now the downsides. So the downsides to using eBay and Mercari is that they do charge a selling fee a selling fee so they charge about 10 percent maybe 12 percent i want to say it's like 12 percent it's like around that, like 10 to 12 percent so if you sell something for 100 bucks ebay and mercari are gonna walk away with 10 percent which is like for 100 bucks they're gonna walk away with 10 dollars now on top of that you're gonna pay shipping fees so you walk away with 90 but then you gotta pay to ship it so you gotta put another 10 aside and then use those 10 to ship it so at the end of the day your 100 dollar item you're only gonna get like 80 bucks for it 80 bucks in your pocket which is okay but you are kind of losing money because like all right i'm paying fees plus i gotta ship it out of pocket you know you do lose a little bit of money but it makes sense because you're using their platform and you're using like that big pool of buyers to get you know get the get eyes on your product pro tip if you do use ebay or mercari to sell stuff buy the shipping labels directly on ebay or mercari because if you sell something on ebay and you know you sell it you put it in a box you get a piece of paper you write down the address go to the post office tell them like hey i want to ship this and then pay them at the post office it's going to come out a little bit more expensive for example i sell this for like 30 bucks on ebay i put it in a box write the address go to the post office say i want to ship it the post office is probably going to charge me like 10 or 12 bucks just to ship this but if i buy the label directly on ebay i probably can ship it for like six or seven bucks which is a bit cheaper you know just buy the label directly on ebay or mercari and it's just cheaper that way and you'll make more money that way you know you're not losing as much all right so another place that you can sell your pokemon stuff specifically your pokemon cards and your pokemon video games are your local card shops and your local game shops aka lcs and lgs you know they're just your local little nerdy card video game shops when you walk in there you'll see a bunch of like maybe like funko pops video games cards you know maybe people on the back playing like some tournament you know playing some cards yeah you can sell your stuff there. you could bring in your collection go to the staff and be like hey i want to sell my collection how much were you guys giving for it they'll praise it they'll look at it and they'll give you an offer give you cash you walk away they walk away everybody's happy right so the positive aspect of doing this is that you could just bring your collection sell it to them it's easy you don't have to like take any pictures you don't have to list anything you don't have to ship anything you just bring your stuff sell it to them they give you cash you walk away very easy now the downside is that you know those shops they're small shops you know they're local they're not they're not like they're not like some big corporations so they're not making that many profits on the products they already sell so if they're gonna buy your stuff they need to make profit they gotta sell that stuff and that stuff that they sell they're probably not gonna sell it right away it's probably gonna sit there for years so they still gonna make money and it's something that they're probably not gonna sell right away so they're not gonna offer you that much they're probably not even gonna offer you like half the value of what you have they're probably only gonna offer you like 30 percent so for example like let, 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 let's say this is worth like 100 all right let's say this is worth like 100 if you bring it in they're probably gonna give you like 30 bucks i mean it's a very easy 30 bucks here you go 30 bucks all right cool but this is worth 100 like they're probably gonna sell it for 100 but like i said they gotta make money and they're probably not gonna sell this right away they're probably gonna have it like in their shop for like two years or something so you being mercari you gotta put in some legwork but you'll hopefully walk away with like 80 bucks while your local card shop and your local game shop you'll probably walk away with like 30 bucks which i mean doesn't really feel worth it but it is super easy to do so that's one way something to think about all right so another way is a bit weird a bit unorthodox but you know it's just some information for you guys to know all right so let's say you have a box of cards all right let's say it's a box of cards that's worth like five thousand maybe even ten thousand dollars all right you know it's worth ten thousand you've seen it go online for ten thousand you've seen you've seen it be 
sold for $10,000. That's an expensive box of cards. 10,000 bucks, what is the best way to sell it? You could go on eBay, you could go on Mercari, but they're gonna charge 10%. 10% of 10,000 is 1,000. So you're gonna be giving $1,000 to eBay or Mercari just to sell your product on their website. That's a lot of money, that's a lot of money. Or you could take it to your local game shop and sell it to them, your local card shop, but they're only gonna give you like 30%, which is $3,000. Your $10,000 item, selling it for 3,000. I don't know about that, man. That does not feel worth it, man. It doesn't feel like it's worth it. Like, so how will you sell it? How are you gonna sell it? Well, the way I thought about, like I thought about this, and again, this is a bit unorthodox, a bit weird, but you could find some YouTubers, some Pokemon YouTubers that open up Pokemon products, Pokemon cards, Pokemon figures. It doesn't matter what kind of Pokemon collectibles. They open up these products for a living, you know, like these big Pokemon YouTubers who have like a million plus subscribers. You wanna contact them. You wanna go to their YouTube channel, find their email, their business email, and send them an email saying like, hey, I have this stuff. Are you interested in it? Or go to their website. Like usually these Pokemon YouTubers, they have like, they have their own websites, you know, they, they have a million subscribers, man. You can go to the website, send them an email through there, or go to their official Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it doesn't matter where, man. Just go to their official page, send them an email, send them a message, and be like, hey, I have this, here's a picture, are you interested in it? And hopefully they see your message and contact you back. Positive aspect. The positive aspect is that more than likely, if they are interested in it, they're gonna give you full value for the product. So if your product is worth 10,000, they're gonna give you the 10,000. You don't have to pay no fees, you know, just a direct exchange, which is nice, right? It's nice because you're not losing any money. Like you probably aren't only have to pay for shipping. So that's the plus side. That's the positive aspect is that you'll be able to get full value. And these Pokemon YouTubers, they have money, man. They have plenty of money and they are always interested in like unique products and expensive products and they can afford it. Downside. The downside is the trust. Trust is a big word. So a downside is they don't know you. They don't know you and they don't know if you're going to scam them. So they'll probably ask you to send the product to them first. Like, hey, send me the product first and then I'll give you the money. Can you trust them to give you the money? See, that's the hard part. You have to trust them and they have to trust you. So, I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like blind trust, having faith for a very expensive product that's worth 10,000. But I mean, if it's a big YouTuber, I mean, they have a reputation. There's a reason they have a reputation, you know? Like, I don't think they're gonna like scam you or anything. If it's a smaller YouTuber, you know, I'll be wary. But even smaller YouTubers might be interested in like some smaller products. Just something to think about. Another way to be secure, pro tip, to be secure and safe and make sure that everybody's happy is to meet in person. So if you do sell it to like a big YouTuber, if it's a big YouTuber, they'll probably want to meet up in person just to see the product. And you know, they'll probably give you like a check or cash, maybe cash. So I mean, meeting up in person, also another downside. I, I mean, most likely you guys don't live in the same town, even the same state. So you'll probably have to like fly over to them or they'll fly to you or they'll send someone to meet up in person. They'll bring you cash, you bring the product, you guys meet up in person, you see the cash, they see the product. It's a bit weird. It might be a little bit shady for some people. It might be a bit uncomfortable, but it is a way. It's something to think about. And if you do do it, just make sure it's someone that has a good reputation. All right, so another way to sell your stuff, your Pokemon stuff, and this is my favorite way, is to go to Reddit and go to the subreddit r slash Pokemon TCG trades. So pretty much this subreddit is where people come together and they sell and buy Pokemon stuff, specifically Pokemon cards. This is a subreddit for Pokemon cards, but they do allow Pokemon related stuff like video games, Pokemon games, Pokemon plushies, Pokemon figures. They do allow it. So you can just go on there, post something like, hey, I have a box of cards. I'm looking for 50 bucks for it. PayPal, who's interested? And hopefully you can find a buyer on there. You know, maybe you have to negotiate with someone, but it is a good way to, you know, be on there and just kind of see how the subreddit works. Now the subreddit, the way it does work, it is reputation based. So you are selling and buying stuff based on reputation. Now, if you are someone with zero reputation and you are negotiating with someone without like a hundred plus reputation, obviously the person with a hundred plus reputation is more trustworthy. So let's say for example, you sell something. So you're like, hey, I'm selling this box. I want 20 bucks for it. And then somebody with like a lot of reputation, hundred plus says like, hey, I'm interested in it. Let's make a deal. So since they have more reputation and you have zero, you're gonna have to send in the product in the mail to them first and once they receive it then they'll give you the money and i know that's a bit you know like i said like with the youtuber like it's kind of like weird because you're, you're trusting like a random stranger to send you the money you know after you send them the product which is hard to trust people right but there's a reason it's reputation based there's a reason this guy already has 100 plus people saying like hey 
that this guy is a good, this guy's trustworthy. Now, if you still don't feel comfortable doing that, the subreddit does offer you like a third party. Someone that has been vetted and trusted by the moderators, you know, they do charge a fee to use a third party. Both of you pretty much sent what you had, you know, the, the product and the money to the third party. And once the third party receives both items, then they send it to both the buyer and the seller, you know, but they do charge a fee to use that. Or you could just be like, you know what? I'm not going to use that service. I have zero feedback. I understand I have zero feedback. So I'm going to send my box of cards to this person who has very good feedback and hopefully they don't scam me, which I mean, they're not going to scam me. Dude, I've been on there. I've already done some to go. Like I've already done some buys and trades and I haven't had any trouble with anybody. Like I've already done that. I already did send some like some of my Pokemon stuff to like somebody that had like a lot of feedback. It's a subreddit based on reputation and you can trust the reputation in my opinion. But when you do go on there, just build up your reputation, you know, buy and sell small cards, you know, like small, like $10 card. And then once you get like a good understanding of the subreddit and how it works, then you can start selling like your stuff that's worth like a thousand dollars plus. Now the thing about it, like I said, is they do allow Pokemon related stuff, not just Pokemon cards. Like they do allow like Pokemon plushies, figures, video games, whatever, as long as it's related to Pokemon. So you could go on there and sell like, you know, your Pokemon plushies or trade your Pokemon plushies for Pokemon cards. You know, you could trade Pokemon stuff for Pokemon stuff, or you could offer cash for Pokemon stuff, or you could sell your Pokemon stuff for cash. You know, there's a lot going on there, man. You should check it out. It's a good way to sell and buy stuff. Just some information for you to know. All right, so the last place I want to share with you guys is similar to the Pokemon TCG trade subreddit. It is on Facebook. It is a Facebook group called Pokemon World. Pokemon World. All right, so on there, it's a group that you join and you just go on there and you make posts of pretty much the same idea as the Pokemon TCG trade subreddit. So you post what you have and you post what you want. You know, say like I have like a box of cards or I have some plushies and I'm looking for like 50 bucks for them. Or you post what you want. You know, like I have, I have cash and I'm looking for a Pikachu plushie, Pichu plushie, doesn't matter. So uh, same idea, man, you, you just look through the post, you make posts. Now, I don't know exactly how this page works because I, I haven't been on there that long. I haven't made any transactions on it. So it's the same idea, but it's just a different place to do it. It is also reputation based and you do got to build your reputation. Now, the thing I like about both the Facebook group and the Reddit group, the thing I like about it is if you do sell something, you could potentially get full value for it. If you have something that's worth a thousand, you know, you could potentially find someone that's going to buy it for a thousand. And the reason I say potentially is because people like to negotiate even though it's worth a thousand they're probably gonna ask you for like hey can you sell it for 950 maybe 980 let's negotiate but also a lot of buyers are willing to buy it for a thousand the reason is because if they buy it for a thousand anywhere else online they're gonna pay taxes on it you know like a thousand with taxes it's gonna be like a thousand dollars fifty but if they buy it from you directly if they buy it from you they're only gonna pay a thousand so it's a win-win situation you know buyer doesn't pay taxes and you don't pay any fees and it's a even transaction so yeah that's a big plus side is that you could get full value of it you don't gotta pay any fees and you get the full value for your product downside is that it's also kind of iffy because there's like a trust aspect to it where you're gonna trust that the other person is gonna you know go through on their end and also it might take time to sell like if you post something you're probably not gonna find any buyers um right away it might take you like months to sell something and you know you might not find a buyer right away you might even have to lower the the price that you want on your product so i mean that's the only downside is that you might not find something right away and you also got to trust people you know you got to trust people which is hard to do for some people but it is a it is a way to do it i think it's worth it so there you go man there's some ways that you can sell your pokemon collection your pokemon cards some avenues let me know if you found this information helpful somewhat helpful and if you guys know of any other methods to sell your pokemon cards pokemon collectibles pokemon plushies let me know i would like to know as well or maybe other people would like to know as well like how else can you sell this stuff you know drop a comment let us know if there's any other ways any any other methods that i probably missed but yeah thanks for watching and i'll talk to you guys in the next one right peace out